Hey guys, it's Stella. Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, hello, hi, I am Stella. I am a New York based flight attendant. I travel the world and I try to take you guys with me as much as possible. If that sounds like something fun, make sure you guys follow along. So today's video is about my rejection. So my rejection from not only one airline, but two airlines. <laughs> You guys, I get a lot of DMs, I get a lot of emails, a lot of comments from you guys, the subscribers, who say I applied for an airline and I was rejected or not accepted. What could I have done better? Should I just stop applying? I don't know what to do. So I just wanted to tell you guys my story of my rejection and how I kind of dealt with it and how it got me to where I am today. Let's start from the beginning. About five years ago, I started applying to flight attendant positions. I had basically just gotten back into the country. I had an overseas job for about three years. So I'd just gotten back into the country and I thought my life was going in this direction. I was like 100 miles per hour, full steam ahead, going this direction. That's not what life had in store for me. It said, actually, you're gonna go in this direction. So yeah, forget about all that. You're going this way. So basically, I showed up at my mom's doorstep. I had no job, no car, nowhere to live. I was absolutely heartbroken. My boyfriend, <laughs> I basically just dumped me, flat out dumped me. And I was just at a very, very low point in my life and I had no idea what I was gonna do or what was next. So my mom had a best friend who was a flight attendant and she said, why don't you apply to be a flight attendant? I think that'd be perfect for you. You've already lived overseas. You kind of like know how to travel uh, internationally by yourself. You can be on these flights. You're good, you're golden. This is the job for you. And I was like, you know what, mom, you're right. I wanna be a flight attendant. So I started applying. I applied to three airlines. My first airline, I got a referral from another flight attendant and that was my mom's best friend's company, which is an awesome company. I take the test, I'm super excited. The next morning I get an email, I'm like, wow, that was fast, like this is moving along. I get an email, the email says, sorry, but no thank you. I did not pass that initial test and I was like, what? I call my mom's best friend, I'm like, what the heck? These are my answers, this is what happened, like how? Was it a mistake? She's like, no, you totally answered those questions wrong. And I was like, ah, oh, I felt like such a bonehead. I was like, this is the end of the world, it's the end of the world. But my mom reminded me I still had applied to two more airlines, so I still had two more chances. So I follow up with the other two airlines, I take the test and I pass them. I knew exactly how to answer them this time. And I took phone interviews, video interviews for both of those companies and one of the companies called me back right away and said they'd like to schedule a face-to-face -face interview with me. And so I was so excited. I was like, yes, like this is my chance. I'm gonna get this one. I feel so good about this. I go to the face-to-face -face interview. There's about 30 or 40 of us. And throughout the day, it kind of started getting smaller. And so by the end of the day, there was about 10 of us there. And I got my one-on-one -on -one HR interview. And so I went to my interview and automatically, like the very first question, the first feeling that I got from the interview person was not a good one. I didn't feel comfortable, I was immediately on edge, I was like nervous, I really needed that job so it was like do or die and I just was like kinda clammed up. Um, she asked me a question that was just so far off, like I think it was something to the effect of what have you done to prepare to live in Alaska if you are selected? And I was like, what have I done to prepare? Well, I have a perka. She was like, no, what have you done as far as, do you know, living conditions, driving conditions, cost of living, transportation, and I absolutely did not know. I was like, N no, I don't know any of that. I know, it, I know it does get very cold. There's harsh winters and weather conditions. I'm prepared for that, and when I get home today, I will research all of that. Well, I never went home and researched that because the interview finished. I was asked to wait outside. About five minutes later, somebody comes up. 
to me and starts walking with me out the door. So I'm like, this isn't a good sign. Why are we walking out the door and not back into the interview area? She looks at me and she tells me, you know, at this time they are not going to pursue my candidacy with that company. She said, I did an amazing job throughout the day. I had high energy, you know, a great smile, seemed like I got along with everybody. All the recruiters really liked me, but sometimes at the end, when you do that HR interview, you just don't mesh well with the HR person. And she said, please reapply in six months. Well, I knew for sure I wasn't applying again in six months. I was just like flat out rejected. I was so upset. I get in the car, I call my mom. My mom's like, oh no, oh no, sweetie. I'm like, oh yeah, mom. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's not happening. I was like, I'm not going to any more flight attendant interviews. I'm not doing any more flight attendant stuff. I am absolutely done. I was so crushed. I was so crushed. I spent that whole like two hours driving home just thinking, what could I have done better? What was wrong with me? Why didn't they choose me? Why didn't they want me? I was crying. I was like listening to music loud. It was just such an awful drive home and an awful feeling. I get home that night, I tell my mom I'm done. I'm like, I don't care if this other airline calls me. I am not going to any more face-to-face -face interviews. I am not meant to be a flight attendant. I'm not doing it. I'm just done, like that's it. <laughs> so a whole eight months go by. The other airline, third airline I had applied for had never called me back, had never emailed me to set up the face-to-face -face interview. Finally get an email from them that they are so sorry that it's taken them so long. They just had a flood of applicants and they are finally ready to interview me face-to-face. -face. After all this time, <laughs> I had moved out of my mom's house. I had purchased a car, transportation. I had got a new job. I had a boyfriend. I had just met my future husband. I had met Bart. We had been dating for about three months and I was set. I had an awesome apartment to you guys. I was like four or five blocks from the beach. I was so excited. I was doing good. I was on the right path again. I was sailing through life. I get this email and I start thinking and I call my mom. I'm like, should I interview? Should I not? I, didn't, I almost was like, maybe I just won't tell anybody and I'll just go to the interview and then if I don't get it, then like, I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> you know, what's the worst that can happen? And I end up telling my mom, she's like my number one supporter and I'm like, mom, I got the email. She's like, oh, that's fantastic. When is it? When do we go? I'm like, mom, <laughs> she always says that. When do we go? When do we move? I'm like, mom, it's me, not you. <laughs> so funny she's so cute so I go to the interview and I was like you know what whatever happens happens I've already done this I already know what to expect I already have a great job waiting for me back at home I have a boyfriend a great apartment I'm doing good I do not need this but let's see what happens I had healed from my wounds of my other two rejections so I went with like a positive good outlook and the same thing, the interview was structured about the same. It started off with a really big group and then it got a little smaller and then it was my turn again. I made it to the HR interview, the one-on-one -on -one interview. And I go and the first initial thing that the interview person tells me is she starts, she calls my name, I get up, she's like, okay, hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm gonna do your one-on-one -on -one interview. And she has my resume in her hand and she says, wow, this is such an impressive resume. I can't wait to sit down and talk to you about it. And I was like, really? <laughs> I spent my whole life working on that resume, so thank you. So we sit down, we have a fantastic conversation. I feel so good about the interview. I finish it all up, they tell us, about there was about 10 of us left, they tell us that they will email us all within two weeks to let us know if we were selected for the job. About a week goes by, I'm sitting in, I'm at work, I'm sitting in my office and I get an email, it pops up on my screen and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that is the interview. So I'm like, looking around, I know it's quiet, I can't like get excited, I can't make like any noises, I'm just like, I click on the email, it opens, and the first word I see, my heart was like almost dropped, is congratulations. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I like wanted to scream, I'm like looking around, but I know I can't tell anybody at my new job. So I like get up real sly, 
I head into the restroom and the first thing I do is I check all the stalls and I call my mom and my mom was like, oh my God, sweetie, oh my God. She was so excited for me because she had, she was the one who initially suggested that I become a flight attendant and you know, I was at her house on her couch, well in her guest bedroom and I was just so down and out and she was like just doing everything to brainstorm to help me find the perfect job and it was her suggestion, it was her pushing me along that really, really helped and I just remember that feeling in the bathroom. I was just, I was like bursting with excitement. Like it was just coming out of like my fingertips. It was coming out of everywhere and I was so excited and I knew, I just knew at that moment in that bathroom, I said, oh my gosh, my life is gonna change. Like everything is about to change. Everything is gonna be so different. And sure enough, it's so different. Everything changed and you know, I think when we go through failure, when we are rejected, I feel like that is the time where we really reflect. It's the most, it's the time when we really sit down and say, wait a minute, what just happened? Why was I rejected? Why didn't they pick me? What happened? And you know, when you succeed, it's just like, oh, hey, I succeeded. I'm done. All right, let's move on to my next success. But when you fail, it's like, it, wait, stop, stop, what happened? Why did I fail? You just don't move on as fast and you're kind of forced to look at yourself and to ask yourself these really hard questions like, what did I do wrong? What could I have done different? Was it just really out of my hands? Could I have prepared more? So I think for me at least, initially getting rejected from those two airlines, I, I learned so much. It really was like, it, those two rejections really prepared me for that last interview. And in hindsight, had I got the first one, I never would have met my husband. Had I got the second one, I would have had to move to Alaska. And not that that's bad, but I wouldn't have met my husband. My life wouldn't be what it is now, and I wouldn't be where I am now had I got those other two. So even though it was so painful and it was so, I felt like such a failure and I was so down on myself. That was actually the absolute best thing that could have happened for me. So you guys, if you have been let down by an airline or any job, you haven't gotten and you feel you're feeling so down, like I would encourage you guys so much to just not feel so down. I know it's so easier said than done, but really kind of look and see maybe what went wrong. <laughs> what you're gonna do different next time, or if, every, if you did everything you possibly, possibly could, then it just maybe wasn't meant to be. I just don't know, that's the only way I really know how to explain it, and I'm so grateful for those two rejections, and I still look back at them, and when I see that other airline, that second airline, where I went all the way to the end, and I see the flight attendants in the airport, I always am like, hmm, I just have this like, Feeling. I tell my husband, we don't fly that airline. I tell my mom, you don't fly that airline, mom. Don't even think about booking on that airline. <laughs> I'm like still bitter. All right, guys, so thank you so much for listening to my rejection story. I hope this helped in any, any way possible. If you guys have questions, if you guys have comments, if you guys have any encouraging stories of your own, please leave them down below so we can all benefit, we can all read from them. Again, you guys, I am Stella, welcome to my channel, and I will see you guys next time.